Welcome to Victory Quilts, a series about the 1940s and life on the home front. I'm Eleanor Burns. The story of the decade continues with two quilt blocks. Well, the first block is the radio windmill. It's made simply with partial seaming. Very easy. Well, the second block is skyrocket, which is just a bit more challenging, but fun. December 7th, 1941 started out as a quiet day in homes throughout the United States. It was Sunday and most folks were getting ready for church. By the end of that day, families gathered around their radios horrified, listening to news about an event that stirred the hearts of Americans more forcefully than any other single event. Life would change forever. Japan bombed Pearl Harbor that morning in a surprise attack that left 2,403 dead. 188 airplanes were destroyed and the Pacific Fleet was crippled. That day, rockets flew, lighting up a smoke-filled sky. Well, this photograph shows the explosion of the American destroyer USS Shaw. Very sad. And this photo shows native Hawaiian firefighters defending their island. These are very brave women. The bombing was regarded as an atrocious surprise attack and an act of dishonor. In memory of Pearl Harbor, I dedicate the skyrocket block. It's basically a nine patch with a star center. Ooh, and I love the quilting. The quilting lines radiate from the star to the rockets. Then there's looping free motion quilting with stars in the background. Well, this is just a perfect wall hanging to make. Let's keep the memory alive and in our hearts. You know, there is no more time for sitting. Let's get to the sewing machine and make these blocks. The radio windmill is a really fun block to make. Well, I tell you that all the time, don't I? But this is really fun because we're going to do partial seaming. New technique I haven't shown you before. You're going to love it. Well, this block ran in the Kansas City Star in 1941. This is the way it looked with this long triangle here and then a square also here. Well, this was run by Miss Anna Killalay. Now, she was from Pleasanton, Iowa. And Anna said, now you could put block to block to block together and you'd have that little pinwheel, that little windmill all over your quilt, or you could set one block together with a solid square. It's a whole different pattern to look at. Well, this is what the 12 inch block looks like. There's that big old windmill right in the center. And then if you put another block beside it, this will start to pick up the next windmill. It's actually made of four parts. And this is what one part looks like. Well, when you sew all four together, you get that center nice and flat. It's a great 12 inch block. And then this is what the six inch block looks like. Very cute. Well, these are the units that we're going to cut. To make a whole 12 inch block, you need to have four rectangles in the medium, four in the dark. You wanna stack them all right side up. Trust me, they have to be all right side up or your windmill just isn't gonna spin. They're rectangles. They're three and a half inches by six and three-fourths inches. Okay, stack them all right side up and take your ruler and cut it. Cut the whole stack at one time, corner to corner, and then repeat with the second stack. That goes pretty good. I think Anna would like that. And then the squares are three and a fourth inches square. You need to have four of those. Well, let's just leave those here because I sectioned out enough just for one patch. All four are made the same as this one patch that I made. Here's my dark already cut on an angle. So I'm just going to take this apart and just place it like this around that center square. And then this is the medium right here. We're going to cut that apart and just place it 
like this. So you can see it's a bit of a square going right around there. So now let's start right with number one. You have to mentally figure out the numbers. Mentally write down your numbers. This is one, and we're going to go counterclockwise around these triangles. So this is two, this is three, this is four. So take number one, flip it right sides together to your square, and this is where that partial seaming comes in. All you want to do is sew part way down. You don't want to go the whole way down. Get them all lined up but sew to the midway point on this square and cut your thread. And then take it, you can do it with the iron, with your fingernail or your wooden iron. Just open and press the seam so that it's behind that number one. Okay, I like this. Just put it right back where it was so you don't get confused. This is number two. Now two is going to go from edge to add, ooh, we got a great big old tip hanging out on that one side, but that's the way it goes. So let's just take number two, and we can sew that from corner, clear out to the outside edge. Good time for a stiletto. So let's just grab that up and line that up. No partial seaming on this one. And once again, open up number two and press the seam so that it's behind number two. <laughs> it's looking good already. Back in place, number three, flip it right sides together and just sew right around here. We're just gonna keep on going up through number four. Well, it's very interesting. You know that the Dion quintuplets were born in 1941, and don't you know that everybody had their ear to the radio. They wanted to make sure that those babies were safe. Oh, such a spectacular event. You know, in the 1940s, that 90% of the programs on the radio were soap operas. Well, the soap operas got their name from their sponsors. You know, they were all soap companies that sponsored their program. And so, that's how they got the name Soap Opera. The longest playing one was a program that was sponsored by Rinso called The Big Sister. Okay, this is three. I'm gonna flip that right like that. I pulled number four out of the way. And I'm just gonna sew right along there. Keep on going, get that all lined up. The longest playing soap opera was Ma Perkins. Can you imagine that? Ma Perkins, that would be a really fun one. But you know, they she sounds like she's kind of like an old, I don't know, kind of country lady. But then this one, Helen Trent. The Romance of Helen Trent. That sounds really good. I love the name of one of her programs. It was called Helen Faints Beside a Corpse. That sounds like a great program. Okay, now, I'm just gonna take number four and fold it back to where we started and continue right along that seam. And that is the last step. Okay, number four, line that up. You know, the women would do all of their cooking and all of their cleaning as they listened to the soap operas on the radio. Now, I just wanna square this block up Press that around, and this is the critical part. I'm using my six and a half inch fussy cut ruler. And it's the corners don't go right out to the seams. Actually, the corners are one eighth inch in. You have to go in one eighth inch on this. And I'm going to carefully place all of my uh, points so that they cross at the quarter inch point. Okay, it doesn't go right out like flying geese. I am at the four inch mark, and if you have to tweak it just a little bit, do that. Just pull it out underneath. I have it on a small cutting mat so that I don't have to pick it up and move it. I'm just going to cut two sides, hold on to that ruler. Don't pick anything up, don't move your ruler, but continue cutting on all four sides. Perfect, got it. So let's just get rid of all these little cutaways. One more right here, and I'll show you close up on that corner. 
See how it's one eighth inch in from that outside edge? And that's all that you have to do. So the next step is just to lay out your four. Hey, I have my four already done. And I'm just going to place them like this. And like magic, the radio windmill is completed. Now I showed you how to do that little center and see how the little, the, the seams all swirl right around on the back side. Flat on the front side, it's perfect. So enjoy your radio windmill while you listen to the radio. We're going to blast through Sky Rocket. Now I wish I could tell you that it was easy, but it's a little challenging. But it's still fun. Well, the pattern was designed by Ruby McKim, and she published it in her book called 101 Patchwork Patterns. And you can see right down here, McKim Studios. Well, Ruby had this book called 101 Patchwork Patterns. You know, I did buy the second edition as my first quilt book. This is a first edition, and I am probably now the fourth owner of this book. I'm quite proud to own it. But here you can see it's by Ruby Short McKim, and take a look at the copyright. Down here, 1931 McKim Studios, Independence, Missouri. Well, not only did Ruby produce it in this book, but she also ran it as a newspaper series as well. And this one says, The Stars Quilt Pattern Contest. This would be fun to have it in a contest. Well, the center starts out easy, at least. This is what the center looks like. It's actually a star. And then there are rockets coming off the outside edges. Let's just start with the star. We'll do the easy part first. And that little six inch block is just adorable. I don't know why, I just love the six inch blocks. So to make that star center, you need to have three and three eighths inch squares. This is the very star center. It's three and three eighths and then to make the points you need to have eight two inch squares these are also three and three eighths these are the corners you need four of them and the star points are sewn to four of the reds also three and three eighths that's easy to remember now you take your two inch squares your star points turn them upside down and draw a diagonal line well sometimes that fabric just loves to slip around so I put mine on a piece of sandpaper, a sandpaper board, and they stick so well. The only way you can get them up is to take your stiletto and literally pick them off. Okay, now I need to have one of the uh, four and three eighths inch squares. Place your yellow square down in the corner like this. And we're actually going to sew just on the right side of that line so that when we flip it, then it turns perfectly. Now, I am going to start in the middle because if you try to start on the point, oh my gosh, all you do is just get stuck. When we don't want any jamming, we are getting right through this block. So cut your threads and take a look. Okay, there we are. We're just on the other side of the line. Take a smaller ruler, line up a quarter of an inch line on the stitching trim the excess and get rid of it. Now you just want to open your star point and then press it open. You can use your wooden iron, your fingernail, or your iron. Now the second square gets placed opposite it and you can see how they just overlap right down here in the bottom. Again, start here on the side so there is no jamming. Let me just line that up and sew right across there. You know that in Hawaii, there is actually a museum. It is a national park now. It's called the Pearl Harbor War Memorial and Visitor Center. And every year, one and a half million people visit there to pay tribute. You know, a lot of the veterans go, they take their families. It's a very emotional event and 30,000 school children participate as well. It's just a wonderful way to see what happened on that day. Okay, that finishes it. Now, once you have 
this uh, little patch done. How about let's just do some trim. I think if I just put that right on there, we could just straighten that off a little bit and call that patch done. Now, let's take these and put them aside because they're already done. You've got the four star points that go right around the outside edges of the yellow. And then this is that large scale, very 40s blue, very patriotic there. And once you've got this whole center laid out, it's the same thing that I've been showing you. It's just sew down those vertical rows and then sew across the other way. But when you sew across the other way, the way this patch lays the best is to press the seams always away from the star points. And from the back side, you can see um, that the last pressing is down through the middle and out. This is a tough call here, you know? These seams obviously lay the best when they're pressed like this, but you can't do them both because you've always got something that's going to make it not lay perfect. But looks pretty good from the right side. Measure it because to get your sky rockets on the sides now, this square needs to be nine and one eighth inches. <laughs> Let me get my rockets ready. We're shooting right through the rockets now. This is what they look like. They're the pointed ones with background on each end and they go straight on that nine patch. Well, there's a template for the rockets, nice tall template like this. You're going to take two red pieces of fabric and they are five and a fourth inches by six inches. Just put them right sides together and trace one going up and down, then pick up and move that template, turn it, and you have just one more line to draw. So you've actually traced two on top, but when you cut, layer cut, you're going to have four. Ooh, make sure you keep those points nice and sharp. Go up and down. This is the best part. You know, you can use your ruler and your rotary cut cutter and get them all done. These two little side pieces, they're gone. Now, the background is also from a set of rectangles. You want to put the rectangles right sides together. So now... This piece is two and three fourths by eight and a fourth inches long. No template, you're just going to use your ruler. The first thing you want to do is find your 45 degree line on the ruler. And on the end of this one, there's a number of them. They're all going corner to corner. So just take and line them up. Oh, I have to keep on moving. All right. Put right here at the corner, 45 on the line, going straight up and just trim off the corner. That's waste, that goes. And then from this peak down to this opposite corner, just make a cut. And this also goes. So you have two pieces that look like this. And basically what you're going to do is just switch them so that you can put the uh, rocket right in the middle. And just think of, make sure you have to have that straight line so that it can line up with that nine patch. Mine's all set. I'm just going to zip right through it. And you make four all exactly like this. Take the rocket and flip it to the left. And you want to have the rocket sticking out just about an eighth of an inch up at the top. Just a tiny bit. And look at this. There's lots down here. Now this block, again, is oversized, so we are going to square it up in the end. That's why you have that nice big tip hanging out at the bottom. Get them lined up. Now it's easy to just start losing that point right down there. But just zip right along there, cut your threads. And now you want to set the seam and open and press towards the background. Make sure you go clear down to this little point. We've still got a nice straight line across the top. That's what we want. Now, it's really just way too hard to sew this tip right down here without trimming this off. So take a ruler and your cutter, line up the edge of the ruler with the side of the rocket, trim off that tip, get rid of it. And then this is the last step. Make sure you get that straight line. Flip this right sides together and once again, provide about a one-eighth inch tip 
right up here at the top. Perfect. See, I guess it's not too hard to do. You're going to make four exactly like this one. Just zip right along there. And once again, you just press that seam towards the background. Only thing different this time, you don't cut off your tip. Let me just push that over, show you. That's looking pretty good. If you need to, you could just go ahead and straighten the top slightly, but leave that on there. That's going to come off whenever we finally square up the block. Now, I have one set up here already. I've already added these, these rockets to both sides of the nine patch, and this is the critical part. Oh my gosh, be really great if those seams on the rocket could line up with the little star, star points but we're going to make sure we get that right. Okay, I just want to take my six inch ruler, line up the quarter inch line along the outside edge so I can take this pencil and I'm actually making marks a quarter of an inch in on both of these seams because that's what we want to match. Now, to do this one, because it's going to be right sides together, we have to put this right sides together now, line up the quarter inch line, put little marks on the seams. Now, where the seams cross, where the lines cross, is what we want to match together. So I'm going to put a pin right here, open it, and put another pin right there, and just squeeze it together. These are not straight angles, and that's the tricky part. We don't want to have anything tricky going on here. So now take the second pin. I can just barely see that little white line. I'm going to put a pin there, open it, and match to the one underneath, and then just squeeze it together. And that way, these lines just go right across here and open out, and your block is just going to be beautiful. Now, the last thing you have to do is just place your 12 and a half inch square up ruler on here and trim off the excess on all four sides. Well, the skyrocket actually was lots of fun. So many quilters think there was not much quilting going on in the 1940s. Well, actually, women were quilting, but they didn't spend much time talking about it because there were more important issues to discuss as the war and what was happening on the home front. Most of the quilts were made in patriotic colors of red, white, and blue. I recently added two antique quilts to my collection that were obviously made for loved ones in the service. Well, this USN quilt is just beautiful with its red and white shield in the center. There are 13 red and white stripes and 13 white stars on a blue background. Well, the maker appliqued anchors on all four sides of the quilt and then included eight sterns. Well, the quilting lines are great. They're stitched like waves, wonderful. Well, the quilt came with the Blue Jackets manual dated 1944, signed by Millard Clark, Company 551, possibly the owner. You know, it's hard to believe that Millard or an ancestor would sell this quilt to commemorate his service. Well, we looked up his name on the internet and found one person with the same name and still alive. You know, he was a sailor too. Well, the second one is a summer quilt with no batting or backing. I just love the eagle in the center with his hand embroidered face. He's perched on top of another shield, again with 13 stripes, that 13 number. The red and blue six-pointed stars are hand appliqued to the top. You know, they were probably easier to applique than piece with background fabric. Well, the border is a most unusual swag. It's very intricate and a perfect accent. The red is just small pieces appliqued to the background, and then the white stars are appliqued on top of a blue shield. Well, after sharing this quilt in my book, Victory Quilts, I got a letter from Penny Klug, and she said her brother rescued the original pattern for this from their grandmother's things. 
is terrific and it's called Liberty. Well, the pattern was published in the Farm Journal and Farmer's Wife in Philadelphia. You know, the pattern was still in its original envelope. So Penny sent me a photocopy of the envelope. It's dated 1941. Right over here it says Farm Journal and Farmer's Wife, Washington Square, Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. I just love finds like this. Well, Penny included a photograph of her adaptation of the eagle with surrounding peace blocks. She added four rows around the eagle, and then she put a final border on the outside edge. It's just wonderful. You know, both of these quilts are beautiful. They're patriotic quilts made for their family's heroes. I want to thank all of the men and women who have so courageously defended our country and continue to defend America so that we may enjoy our freedom. We salute you.